happy last day of school. There is a ton to do today, so I just wanted to pop in in the morning. And then I told you um, last week that this week I'm going to do a little what I'm gonna change and what I'm going to keep. So I plan on that coming out. That'll be like the rest of this video, but I just wanna pop in and show you uh, how I set up our last day of school. This is something I have always done in my classroom, but I like to set up a little last day of school breakfast. So I kind of put our tables in a little U here. Um, I'll insert a picture here of what I gave each student. I basically gave them just a little picture of me and them with a handwritten note on the back and some glasses to take off with them. And then, like I said, this morning we'll do a little breakfast. So I have just Dunkin' Donuts and some orange juice. Um, but it'll be a fun and sad morning. As of yesterday, lots of big emotions were already out and about. So I have a feeling today will be a little bit of the same, but it's only a half day. We're going to try to mostly have some fun, um, read a couple books, play a couple games with friends and send them off on their way. And then in the afternoon, I need to kind of pack up the classroom. So I don't know how much I'll be popping in, but I just wanted to give you a little look-see of what we are doing this morning. Good morning, happy Monday, but happy Monday during summer. I think the last time I saw you, I was at school. It was the last day. Um, I believe I checked in in the morning, but I know I had said that I wasn't sure I'd be able to kind of pop in throughout the rest of the day. And I think that was the case. Um, I think I just have a clip from the morning and then a little clip of my classroom being all packed up for summer. And now it has been, you know, four or five days later and I have been enjoying sweet, sweet summertime. We actually did a little camping out in the backyard. Here's some pictures and videos of the boys. We had a little fire, made s'mores. Um, I slept inside while the boys slept outside in the yard in a tent, but it was a whole lot of fun. I know I had mentioned that I wanted to do a what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to change type video, and I actually wrote down a bunch of notes of things that I want to keep for the upcoming year and things I wanna change for the upcoming year. And real quick, just in case you are new here, my name is Susan Jones. I am a first grade teacher up in Massachusetts. I taught first grade for a long time um, years ago, and then I took some years off. I was doing curriculum creation, making YouTube videos, all that fun stuff, and subbing while my kids were at home and now I am back in the classroom. So this is year two of kind of this phase two of my teaching career, which has been really fun. So I will be staying in first grade next year and I'll be in the same classroom, which makes a lot of things easy uh, for me. But I do want to share just kind of the things I'm thinking about keeping, what I really liked, what worked well, and then also some of those things that I really want to change up for next year. Some of which I actually already started to change and then I'm going to continue uh, that change that I wrote down. So let's start with the keep. What am I going to keep for this upcoming year? So the first thing I'm going to keep in my classroom next year is my morning meeting. Now, morning meeting is one of my absolute favorite times in the classroom. I have tons of videos on how I run morning meeting in my classroom, some games, activities, and everything I like to do. Um, a lot of these videos are from before I went back into the classroom. So I just share past experiences of when I taught before. But each year that I'm in the classroom, my morning meeting might look slightly different. And this year I'm pretty much going to keep it exactly the same as I did this past year. So here is the slide. We always have four main parts of our morning meeting. And if you watched any of my videos throughout the year, you will know that these are the same four steps I followed every single day. The very first thing we would do each day is start off with our morning breathing and my peer role model, which I'll talk about in my next thing that I'm keeping. Um, my peer role model would pick a number between five and 10. They would choose that number and then we would take some deep breaths just to center ourselves with our breathing ball. Now it's also important to mention just because I haven't you know, made this specific yet, but we did sit in a circle during this time. We would all come over to the rug and sit on a circle. Uh, so we were all nice and close to one another. Uh, and then so we would do our breathing. The next thing we would do is our morning greeting where we would go around the circle. We would say hello in some sort of way. And each time we would greet one another, we would say that person's name. So we would say, good morning, Andrea. Good morning, Mrs. Jones. So on and so forth around the circle. 
Next was our morning message, which was typed up by me. It was just a little good morning to let students know what we can expect for the day, um, what our special was, if there's anything specific we are working on. And every once in a while, I would throw in a little review question here too, just to get students thinking about our prior learning. And then last was our morning meeting activity. Now morning meeting activities can get pretty lengthy and I did not want that. So what I did is basically each day of the week had its own quick activity that we would do. So every Monday or day that we would come back from a weekend, so even if it was a long weekend, it would happen on Tuesday, we would just share kind of weekend news. Who wants to go around and share something they did over the weekend? And I would always start that off in my morning message. So I would share something I did with my family this weekend and then I asked students to share their own. This is a good time for them to kind of just share what they want to, get their kind of talking out. We haven't seen each other for a few days. There's probably something they wanna share. So that's what we would do. Then on Tuesday, I tried to keep it very simple and we would do Tell Me Tuesday. All we would do is students would then pair up with somebody that they're sitting next to on the rug, they'd face one another, and they would have two questions that they have to answer. Now these could be anything, and I really tried to incorporate all sorts of different skills during this time. So towards the end of the year, it was a lot of review. It was, tell me two ways you could solve this problem. And it might be like a 36 plus 24. Um, some sort of problem that would be on the board and they would have to come up with two different ways that you could solve it. It might be, tell me two things that make a really good friend or tell me two things that make you sad, two things that make you happy. Tell me what your favorite part of the book we read yesterday was. It can be anything. So I always just do two quick Tell Me Tuesday questions. Students talk to their partners, I kind of listen in and then I'll have one or two share their answers after each of the questions. Wednesday was always Would You Rather Wednesday. This was always a fun one to just share some fun opinions. Um, I used this pack right here. This is my Would You Rather pack that's on TPT. It had enough for the whole year. And like I said, I would do two every Wednesday. Um, and students would just have to pick their side. So they were, you know, sharing their opinion. And then they had to provide a reason for it. So we talked about that word because and kind of extending our sentences from the very beginning of the year. And for this one, instead of sitting on the rug, we would always do stand up, hand up, pair up, which is just a Kagan structure, but it's something that I incorporate in my classroom a lot. So this was an easy way to teach it. Basically all students would do is they think about the question first, and then I have everybody stand up. They put their hand up. And then they have to walk around the classroom um, before I have them. And then when I say pair up, they have to find somebody whose hand is up. So the hand up just signifies that I'm looking for a partner. Once they find their partner, they high five each other, share their answers. I would rather uh, fly on a magic carpet because they say why, they listen to the other person, and then they turn away and go find another partner. So they're just kind of mixing around the room. And then I just say pause. And then everybody looks up at the board. I say our second would you rather question. Um, and then they continue mingling. So again, pretty quick. Thursdays was always yoga break Thursday. Um, it was just a quick five minute video that I would find on YouTube. I usually like to do the salamander yoga ones. They kind of look like this. There's about four or five of them. Um, and we would just spread out around the room and kind of start off nice and quiet for our day. So a little stretching, uh, a little couple yoga poses. At the end, they always, you know, lie down, do deep breaths, and then we kind of center and start our day. And then on Friday was always our game. Now there were five different games we learned throughout the year that I will share at another time. Actually, most of them I already have videos about. One was Katcha, one was Zoom, one was Buzz, Sparkle, and Don't Be a Sunday. So all of these games, some of them are just fun, like Katcha and Zoom. The others have some sort of either counting or spelling um, or days of the week type of element. And I can tell you far and away, the favorite activity or favorite game this year was Buzz. I think it was picked 80% of the time. So Buzz was a fun one. I have a whole video on it right there if you wanna check it out. So not only keeping my morning meeting, but keeping that same exact setup is what I plan to do next year. If I do make any changes along the way, of course I will let you know as the videos continue. All right, keep number two are my classroom jobs. Now I made this little poster kind of on the wall. I kind of made a DIY bulletin board and I just put everybody's names on little Velcro strips that I would change each week. Now I do know many teachers don't like classroom jobs because they feel like it's a lot of work. All of these I felt like were very self-explanatory and the only work I need to do is changing them. And realistically that peer role model, I mentioned that person earlier, the peer role model's job is kind of like a catch-all for anything I need them to do. I let my students know at the beginning of the year that this person is during their week when they are the peer role model, they are like the one in charge. They're the one that I am always looking to to make sure they're doing the right thing, to help me out with any game that I'm teaching. 
um, to pick our morning breathing numbers, anything that arises during the week, that is the go-to person. So also on Friday afternoons, when we're packing up, I would have the peer role model just kind of rotate everybody's job. So for me, it was very simple. I did not find that I had to do any more work other than put up the bulletin board. And I really like that it instills responsibility for our classroom and that it's not just me cleaning up. Everybody kind of has their own job to do to kind of help out our classroom community. So classroom jobs for me is also a keep. All right, the next thing I wanna keep for next year is my sound wall in the back of the room. Now here are some pictures, it's not fully complete yet, meaning I hadn't taught all the sounds when these pictures were taken, but basically each time we learn a new phonic skill or a sound pattern that we're gonna be learning in foundations, I would add it to the back wall. Now, I am extremely purposeful about what I like to add in the spaces uh, of my room. So if I'm going to add something to the wall, I want it to be used. So I taught my students right away how we use the sound wall, which is essentially just them using it when they're spelling. So we're learning that what the sound is, they can look at the sound wall when they hear the sound to see what letters represent that sound, and then they can use that in their writing. And I did have students all year long looking at that sound wall. Now also just the way my classroom is set up, um, there were only at most three students ever that actually had to turn their bodies all the way around to look at the sound wall. Um, and we moved seats pretty often, so that wasn't horrible. Everybody else was either facing the sound wall or they could just turn to the side and see the sound wall pretty easily, which is something else you wanna think about. If you have all the materials that you want them to reference behind you and they have to actually like turn their body all the time, it's not going to be that useful. Also, I do have all of those sound cards completely for free. I will link them down in the description. Um, I shared them a lot this year, but just in case you haven't grabbed them or you want to grab them, I'll link them down below. The next thing I'm keeping are my magnet schedule cards and my magnet date cards. Now, if you watch my videos this past year, I usually started off every day's clip kind of with me changing out the date on the board and changing out my special. Now, I always like to have my visual schedule on the board for students that wanna see kind of what's coming next. We move a magnet along the way. It's just a nice visual for them to see where we're at in the day, where we're going. Um, and if there's any sort of changes to the schedule, I can add it uh, over there and kind of point that out at morning meeting. Now also the date, I don't miss at all, and this is something I'm gonna talk about next too, but I don't miss having like a big calendar. Uh, I don't have a ton of space in my room for or wall space to put things up. So again, I wanted to be pretty purposeful about when and where I'm using this. I only have a few whiteboard spaces, one of which I used as a ledge for displaying the books we're reading. So I really, to maximize space, I just have those magnet cards that I switch out every day that have the date. It has the day of the week, the month of the year, the actual date, and then the year at the end. So those are also free along with my scheduling cards that I will link down in the description. That is something I made last summer. It was really easy to prep. I just laminated them all and then added some little magnet tape to the back. But I'm just making a little note here so I can make sure I add that to the description in case you also want to grab them. Speaking of the date and calendar, like I said, I didn't wanna have a big calendar display up there. Um, when I taught a few years ago, actually the last like classroom position I was in, I had a huge, huge room with tons of different spaces. And so I had like a whole wall that I could keep my calendar at and I loved it. It was perfect for that space because when it was calendar time, we would all kind of walk over there um, you know, it had the pocket chart with the calendar. We could do our days of the year. We could talk about the weather and everything was just right there for me. In this room, that's just really not possible. And I don't want to use up that whiteboard space for that. So instead, another thing I am keeping this year is my digital calendar. Now my digital calendar looks like this. Each month of the year, I have a picture of my dog. Of course, it's not really my dog. This is clip art, but my Bernice Mountain Dog, Sally. I have a little picture of him doing something fun. It will say the month and it will just kind of have the calendar here. And then each day there is some sort of object to move onto the day to represent what day it is. And then at the bottom we say today is, you know, Monday, August 4th, whatever. So I do have my calendar helper come up and they kind of stand next to the smart board while we do this together. So they'll say, okay, we need to move the sun to this spot. This is the date. And then we go to the next page. The next page is simply just getting our students used to days of the week and what order they come in. So today is, yesterday was, and tomorrow will be. And then the next slide here is our days of school. So here is where we really start that place value talk. And here is where I like to incorporate money all year long. So we have our piggy bank. And every time there's a day, we add one penny. We talk about those coins. We talk about the base 10 blocks 
we talk about it all. And then this is the time where we talk about our exchanges. We can't have 10 ones, we need to exchange it for a 10 rod and we put that in the 10 space. And then same over with our piggy bank. Once we have five pennies, we exchange it for a nickel and so on throughout the year. All right, the next slide we would have up would be our weather chart. And this was an easy one. My weather helper would then come up, my calendar helper would sit down, and the weather helper would say what the weather was like today. And then it also incorporated a little data and graphing. So as the month goes on, as the weeks go on, I could ask them different questions based on what I see in this chart here. And then the last slide was just the Pledge of Allegiance. So we all stood and our flag holder would go over, uh, stand under the flag, and we would all kind of look at them and do our Pledge of Allegiance. The whole calendar routine only took about five minutes. So I like that it was quick. And again, I like that it was digital because it doesn't actually take up any space in my room. So that is definitely a keep. All right, let me look down. I have a couple more keeps before I go into the changes for next year. So another keep, this is kind of a basic one, but my entire classroom setup, like the physical setup of the room, I'm going to keep for next year. I, at one point, I think it was in May, I decided to kind of switch up the desks a tiny bit where I did four, what was it? Four groups of four. And then I had three kind of pairs in the back, whatever it was, I did not like it. I'm going to, it just, I didn't maximize the space in my room and I like having a big open area in the middle because we do a lot of standing up, walking around, um, moving and working in quiet spaces. We don't do too much work just sitting at our desks. So my favorite configuration I'm going to keep is my um, three groups of six desks. Here's a picture of kind of what it looked like at the beginning of the year. So we'll have those three kind of main sets of tables. And then I also liked the other parts of my room. I liked having my small group area be in the back of the room with my horseshoe table. Um, I had a table in the very back of my room where my aide would work most of the year, but even when she wasn't in the room, students could go back and use that space as like a quiet space or if they're working with partners. And then I also had my low white table where students worked all year long. Um, we do a lot of partner work in my class. We do a lot of getting up, moving around. Uh, we don't do too much actually sitting in our seats. So that's why I like to kind of maximize Maximize. I like to maximize all of the kind of workspaces that we could have in our room. So I'm going to keep that this year. And the last kind of keep that I wrote down is kind of an all encompassing one, but teaching with slides. Now I mentioned this before, um, the last time I taught in a classroom full time, not just you know, subbing or when I was doing my part time work, um, was before the times of the smart board. Now I had a smart board, but it wasn't, nobody was teaching with slides. It was a lot different than what it looks like now. And I can tell you that I love teaching with slides, kind of guiding my day. It is my favorite thing to do. So when I talk about slides, I like having it up there for my math rotations. I like having it up there for all of my um, foundations work. I basically taught with slides. I would go through the manual and I would kind of insert all the skills and things we're going to be doing. That way I didn't have to hold my book up there. I could just click along the slides and as I got used to the routine, I knew exactly what we were doing um, for the day. Also during writing time, I loved having my timer and nice calming music already embedded into the actual slides. It just made the day run a lot smoother. So a big job for me this summer is actually getting slides for the phonics alignment that I was just talking about, getting all my math slides um, up there. I have a bunch of the math, the math teaching slides already. They look like this. Um, but I have other ones that I wanted to do. And then my writing slides, just kind of getting them all incorporated, um, definitely in all the SJT clubs. And I would like to also put them on TPT. In fact, I just finished, um, what day is it? It's Monday, Monday the 17th, but I just finished uh, unit one for the phonics slides um, to kind of guide me next year, which is going to be awesome. But if that is something you are interested in, let me know down in the comments. Um, if you'd be interested in kind of buying or looking at those slides and using them for your own students. But that is definitely the way I like to plan and it's definitely the way I like to teach. So that was an exciting win for me. I wasn't sure how I would like that heading back into the classroom this year, but I found that I really, really like the visual of it all for me and for my students. All right, now let's dive into what I'm going to change for next year. Let's see how we're gonna switch it up. All right, let's talk about what we need to change going into next year, what was kind of bugging me and why I wanna change it. The first one is a big one and we already got it changed for next year. I talked about this a lot in my videos this year, but our math block needed to change. 
not the way that my math block is set up. I love the way um, I teach math. I always start off with our math warm up, and then we go into the explicit teaching, some guided practice, and then independent practice. But the problem was where our math block was kind of put in our daily schedule being right after lunch and before specials, it really got the short end of the stick. It got completely squished by transition times. Also, if you're a teacher, you know that sometimes when your kids come in from recess, especially later in the year, it was like putting out little fires. By the time we actually got into our math talk or in our math warm up, um, and I transitioned pretty quickly. I pride myself on having nice, fast transitions but it was just too short of a time. Um, we also have a bunch of half days for PD development in our district, which is great, but because again, we don't have a half day schedule and because math was in the afternoon, we were missing a lot of math. So that is something that was kind of a bigger problem that needed to change. Heading into next year, we will be having math in the morning. So we kind of switched up our schedule. I'll do a whole nother video on what our schedule looks like for next year, what I'm excited about, and all of that. So if you are interested in that, also let me know down in the comments, but I do plan to make a video kind of talking about that as well. But math block is going to be changed so we can really maximize that time. Now also our math block last year was only 45 minutes. We ended up, I think it was just a few months in that we realized this is too fast. 45 minutes plus being sandwiched in between those two transitions was not enough time at all. Um, so we actually extended it to an hour. So now our math block is an hour long. It's in the morning and we should have much more time to really get through a full complete lesson and kind of walk through all those steps that I know my students should have. So I am very excited about that change. Now, speaking of the math block, something I said I was going to keep is my digital calendar, which I was going to keep. I told you all about it, how I love it, but I'm going to make one small change to that. And I need to add a slide in there. I think I'm going to add it after my... Uh, the piggy bank slide after the days of the school year, but I need to have a slide in there about time. Now, time is a unit that we teach for like a week, right? We teach them how to tell time to the hour and to the half hour. Maybe we get eight days if we're lucky on it, but it's a very short unit. And when I teach it, you know, 90% of my students get it. But then if I don't review it enough, um, and I remember this from when I taught previously, but this year, Again, it just didn't stick with me. That's something that I wanna change. Um, by the time it was the end of the year and I was doing that end of year assessment, trying to see where they're at for report cards, it was as if the half hour, it was as if I never taught it. And I was like, oh dear. So I added in some review slides, especially during that math warm up time, which is great. But I feel like it, I could easily add in a quick, you know, what time does this say? Or what time will we be having art today? Like, I'm not exactly sure how I wanna do it yet. So I'll keep you updated on that as well. But some sort of slide that has an analog clock and a digital clock, um, so we can review that just all year long. I might even incorporate it just like two days a week and not every day, but I'll have to see. But that's something I do wanna change. I need to incorporate telling time uh, much more often this year. Another change is going to be organization. Now I do have a pretty organized class, I will say. I feel like my materials are largely organized for the most part. Um, but you really have to live in a space for a while to kind of figure out how you really want things to go, how you use things. Um, and there are some organization things I absolutely loved. For example, I used this all year long for my wind stations. Um, if you watched any of my videos, I showed you how I did it, where the top, uh, the top one would be my independent work. The next one would be our math work. We had the writing station. And then towards the end of the year, I also incorporated some phonics poems that students would add to their fluency folders. So that was just a nice, easy way to organize my win stations. I had literacy centers with task cards that I loved and that was all organized well. But this kind of area right here in my classroom, these buckets here and then the buckets on the top, I really needed to figure out how to organize that better. Now in my last video or two videos ago, I was sharing how I was organizing a few of those materials with these boxes here. These are the 12 by 12 scrapbook boxes that I loved. I got them from Michael's for like $4 a box. Um, and I recently started to kind of do all that and label it. I think, and actually let me know if you're interested in this, because if I talk about how I'm organizing everything, that's like a whole video. So if this would probably be a good one for over the summer when I go in to my classroom and get it all set up, but I can do a whole video on organization. If that is something you're interested, in, please let me know in the comments. Um, I know I keep saying that, but I only like to make videos if I think you're actually interested in it. If 
you're not, then I don't want to make the video for you or for me. So, <laughs> uh, but I'm going to put a note here because I do feel like that would be helpful um, just to kind of let you know what organization bins I use, how I organize all the different materials so that I can use them uh, the most, like I can maximize their use, right? So organization is something I definitely am switching up this year in a few different ways. So if you want a video on that, let me know. The next thing I am switching up next year is kind of my morning routine. Now, at the beginning of last year, I would use my morning work. This is what it looks like. I have them themed and it kind of has some phonemic awareness activities along with some quick math activities that students would do um, right when they came in. And then after they would finish that sheet, they would go right into like morning play buckets of some kind. And then a few months in, I just changed it to kind of a soft start without the morning work. Um, and my plan was to kind of do a month with morning work, a month of just soft start, a month with the morning work, a month with the soft start. And I never got back to the morning work. So I think I do want to do that rotation again, because what happened was the soft start was nice for a while until it wasn't. Um, it was a soft start until it became a loud, crazy start. So there are definitely some management things there that I want to switch up, but I do want to bring back that spiral of the morning work because they're very short pages and it did not take students a long time. For students that it was taking a longer time, that is definitely kind of a differentiation piece. Um, I would not have my students miss out on playtime because they were taking too long to do this work, right? This was supposed to be a review thing. Um, it was supposed to be quick and easy. So if it's not a review for them and it's really difficult for them, I would never make my students do that uh, and miss out on a play. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So instead, and that was not the case, it was only a case for a few of my students and we just differentiated or I would, you know, kind of cut the sheet in half. They only had to do two problems here and there. However, we fixed it. But also when it comes to the soft start and the toys, we have a lot of kind of fun materials that we use in the class, especially during indoor recess and during these morning times, like magnet tiles, Legos, Jenga blocks, brain flakes. All of this to say that next year, I'm going to implement some sort of a toy rotation into the works. And I feel like I should know this because, you know, I am a mom of two boys who used to be toddlers, and I know that the novelty of these toys wears off when they're all just out and about and can be used every single morning. So even though we had so many things to do, um, my kids would start coming in, you know, in April, maybe late March, but really April and May, and they're like, I don't know what to do. I don't want to play that anymore. Or they would start getting wild with the materials. Um, and I had to start like, you know, taking things away, which I don't love to do, but absolutely will do if necessary. I just feel like there were things I could have done better to not have that be a problem in the first place. So first of all, going back and forth between the morning work and the soft start, and then also implementing a, a toy rotation. So maybe for one week at a time, they can choose between magnet tiles and brain flakes. And then the next week they can play with Legos and Jenga blocks or whatever, giving them like three or four options that are rotating. So that is something I'm definitely doing next year. If you have any tips about that, let me know down in the comments. That would be very helpful. All right, taking a quick look, this is a simple one that I'm changing. Uh, these chair pockets. These chair pockets are from Really Good Stuff and I largely love Really Good Stuff. So many of my things in my classroom are from Really Good Stuff. But these chair pockets, in my opinion, are not Really Good Stuff. Now it was my second year on these. Um, these were hand-me-downs from the teacher before me and largely they seemed in decent shape at the beginning of the year, but by the end of the year, I had like four or five of them just rip. Um, and I like having chair pockets for organization. So we're not constantly going to like similar spaces um, all around the room. And again, my room is not large enough to have a lot of communal supplies, which is what I used to like to do in my larger rooms. So I do want chair pockets and I ended up purchasing on my own the Aussie pouches or Aussie pockets, I think they're called. This is what they look like. I had these when I taught in Vegas and they were the best thing ever. They come in canvas and denim. Um, they are super stretchy, but then they also, when you wash them, they just like shrink right back up and they last so much longer. So I did uh, happily donate all my other chair pockets to another teacher. Um, there are ways to probably make this go better. I found out that I was having my students store their whiteboards vertically in them, which was just kind of like making the pockets lean back more as opposed to if they were horizontal, they wouldn't have been leaning as far. So there were th some things that I could have changed for sure, but 
and this was an investment like i said this is not something that i uh like i'm recommending to anybody at all if for some reason you are looking for chair pockets and have a budget to do so or if someone's willing to gift them to you um i would recommend the aussie pouch or aussie pocket i should probably look up the real name of them um that's what i would recommend but i don't think if you already have chair pockets don't trash them and get new ones that's not what i'm saying but i was um happy to invest in them for my classroom for the next few years and then pass them along to somebody else when i am done teaching um, and these ones, like I said, the other ones I just passed along to somebody else to also use. So that was a quick little silly one, but I do not recommend those pockets. All right, I was just looking and I have two more. One of them has to do with the slides. Now I mentioned how teaching with slides is something I am keeping, but I also had it on the change part um, because it's something I'm still kind of working on. So as I create these slides, I think during my poetry unit, I shared with you all what my poetry slides looked like and how I used them when we were creating our poetry books. And I absolutely loved it. Um, I mentioned this already, but I love incorporating the little video timer already. Like we're going to sit and we're going to write for 15 minutes. It already has our classical music. My students already know in the classroom that when the music is on, our voices are off, um, or at least when we're talking, if we can be at a whisper level, but I should not hear you above the music. It sets a nice kind of calming space for our writing time. Um, and that goes with all the other subjects as well, right? I don't have that timer during reading and during math, but I do have things that I use that the slides just easily incorporate. So that was kind of a keep and a change. The change is making sure I finish all those slides. So, um, but the last one that I really have on here is incorporating a more consistent vocabulary routine. Now, this is a bummer to me because something I was excited about going into the year, I even mentioned it in my interview, as something I wanna get better at is explicitly teaching vocabulary. Now I do feel like I have all the, you know, research-based knowledge and steps down to teach new vocabulary, but I don't feel like I did it consistently this year. And a large part of that I feel like has to do with our uh, literacy curriculum. Many of you know I was on the literacy curriculum team this year. Uh, we are adopting a new literacy curriculum. We currently use foundations for the phonics portion. We have Hegarty for phonemic awareness, but we currently don't have anything um, for that kind of language comprehension strand, right? We don't have anything for that. We have loose based um, genre studies that we use that were kind of homegrown from years ago, but they don't even extend throughout the entire year. So we have to kind of supplement a lot. Now, during the supplementation time, I would use these right here. Um, this is something new that I came out with this year. These are called my book bunches, and they have explicit vocabulary and activities for popular read aloud books, which I've loved. But again, because I was kind of sprinkling these in with uh, other pieces that were kind of grabbing and going throughout the year, it just didn't feel super consistent. So like I said, I do feel like I have the steps down. I know how to teach vocabulary effectively. Um, I just didn't do it consistently this past year. And that's something I want to keep kind of at the forefront of my mind heading into next year. I do think that having a, uh, actual literacy curriculum will help out a ton. We are piloting for the first half of the year. We're piloting both HMH into reading along with EL education. So we're going to have two pretty different pilots. Um, and then the second half of the year, we're kind of back to what we had before. So it's going to be piecemeal again, but I do want to try to just keep it at the forefront and make sure that I am introducing, you know, five to 10 new vocabulary words each week, really kind of doing a deep dive on them and making sure my students are using them in applicable, you know, good ways, meaningful ways. That was the word I wanted to use. All right. So there you have it. We are less than a week out from school and I wanted to do this while it was fresh on my mind. So like I said, even starting last week on that last day, I started writing a list of things I'm going to keep, things I want to change, um, just to keep me accountable. And also, like I said, it was fresh in my mind. I know as summer goes on, I'm going to be learning all sorts of fun and new things and I'm going to want to implement them. But I do want to just keep in mind these things that I wanted to change so that way I can focus on it next year and I can hold myself accountable. You can hold me accountable and 
we can talk about it and see how it goes next year. All right, so those are some things I want to keep and change heading into next year. If you have things that you really wanna keep and that worked really well for you, let me know down in the comments and also let me know what you wanted to change. What did not go well? What do you plan on implementing more of next year? Let me know down in the comments. It might spark some ideas for me and others. I know it is summertime for me and it's probably summertime for you, but I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.